Keep your hands up, Liza. Put your hands up, boy. Put your hands up. Javante Davis versus Lamont Roach may be postponed, but this could be a good thing. In this video, I'm gonna break it down and let you know what's going on. Now, on my channel, I strive to provide excellent, accurate, and reliable information. That's my policy. There's a lot of low quality boxing content available. Content creators putting out clickbait, trying to lure you in, desperate for views, bad audio quality, bad visual quality, you know, cheap graphics, cheap thumbnails, the whole nine yards. And Javante Davis, unfortunately, being the star that he is, he gets a big portion of that. He has probably the most sensationalized and made up stories on him for whatever reason. And that's what happens when we're at the top. So there's a report from Dan Rayfield that December 14th, which was never officially confirmed. See, and that's the thing. We got to pump your brakes and we got to first analyze that. PBC, Premier Boxing Champs, never actually announced Gervonta Davis versus Lamont Roach as like an official go ahead. I mean, Tank put it out and he put out a flyer and things like that, but they never had like a formal like press conference and things like that. And now we're finding out that this may not actually be the case. I don't think Javante Davis was necessarily supposed to put that out prematurely because they were probably working on some things. But nonetheless, you see this article link in the description. Javante Davis shifting off December 14th date could lead to another David Benavidez doubleheader. Two individuals connected to the business of Javante Tank Boxing, so their sources, they talk about his lightweight title defense against junior lightweight champion Lamont Roach Jr. have confirmed to boxing scene the plans for a December 14th bout in Houston are being reworked. One promising solution is to pair Gervonta Davis and Lamont Roach with the attractive light heavyweight bout between David Benavidez and David Morrell, who are seeking a January 25th Amazon Prime pay-per-view fight in Las Vegas. Quote, that becomes a big event then, says one of the officials. While the 30-0 Gervonta Davis pushed for his next title defense to be held and placed in Houston, a series of situations made the effort wobbly, according to one individual. So I think Tank probably wanted the fight to take place in Houston. He's talked about wanting to explore some of these big important cities in america like chicago he wanted to fight there he wanted to fight in atlanta which he did successfully two times he also mentioned wanting to fight in houston so i think he was wanting to do it but for whatever reason behind the scenes maybe securing the venue maybe the cost of the venue i don't know but for whatever unanswered reason this may not be the case so now they might combine it with David Benavidez and David Morrell says Gervonta he wanted to fight against Lomachenko or WBC champion Shakur Stevenson. Imagine that. But Lomachenko balked and Stevenson talk stalled. So you guys see there's a lot of lies about Tank and people are like, why won't he fight Shakur? Shakur is now injured and it says Stevenson talks stalled. Like that means they didn't get anywhere. It's like when a car stalls, you can't get anywhere right so people are spreading this notion you got content creators who will make it sound like tank is ducking smoke and notice the play before they were saying and using Devin Haney's name because they thought Devin Haney could be the one to defeat Gervonta Davis but then they switched it and now since Devin Haney got pulverized by Ryan Garcia's left hook in their fight on April 20th now it becomes new people. They try to create a new Frankenstein to beat 
Javante Davis instead of just admitting the guy's good. First, they say he doesn't want to fight black fighters. Then he fights Frank Martin and reportedly could fight Lamont Roach, another black fighter. So that's back to back blacks, which dispels that whole notion that Tank is ducking smoke from slick black fighters because Frank Martin and Lamont Roach are two black fighters with athleticism, good boxing fundamentals. Frank Martin's a southpaw and they both can box and they're they're both sides. They're balanced. They have offense, but they also have defense. Says Davis was heavily favored against Roach. PBC has sought to beef up the card with the fight with Brandon Figueroa rematch with cool boy Fulton, Stephen Fulton after Fulton won their fight in 2021. Former middleweight champion Jamal Charlo has also reportedly been mentioned to be on the card. That pay-per-view card figured to undersell during the heart of the holiday season and one week before Usyk versus Fury. I don't think Usyk Fury has anything to do with that, but whatever. With Benavidez Morel potentially looming just six weeks later than the planned date, a return doubleheader for Javante Davis and Benavidez would give PBC a strong launching pad to what could be a strong 2025. PBC is also plotting a title defense for Dura. He's going to fight somebody, right? And they have staged Canelo's last fight. When he defeated Tank, defeated Frank Martin June 15th, blah, blah, blah. And it says Davis said he's willing to flip flop roles with Benavidez, right? He said he would return the favor because Benavidez clearly could have fought Alexander Vodstick on a standalone, you know, did it in Arizona or wherever, Vegas, LA, and he elected to be on a co-feature for Javante Davis. Davis, Tank Davis said he would do the same thing if the situation presented itself. So that's where we're at. Benavidez, Morel, hotly anticipated fight between stable mates in their prime. Absolutely. Benavidez, Morel is a beast of a fight. They currently stand as WBC interim 175 pound champion and WBA secondary champion Morel behind newly undisputed Arthur Beterbiev. PBC did not return messages left to them following the initial report from Dan Raphael, who broke the news that December 14th may no longer be the date. It says Roach's promoter, he's declined to comment on the matter as did Benavidez promoter Samson. So this is just coming from sources. They couldn't get actual confirmation from some of the parties. And that makes sense because in business, there's nothing to talk about. You want to just get the fight over the line. And by talking to the media and answering questions, that's the quickest way to make sure the fight doesn't materialize or that it falters if you do too much. So I definitely believe do not. It, it doesn't even have to be boxing only just in life. Do not announce your plans before you make them. That is a bad, bad thing to do, because one, what happens if you announce it and then something comes up so you can't fulfill that particular date that you put out? Now you look like a liar and people are going to judge you or if you never do it, then they're like, hey, you said that you were going to. You know, so it's better to just get the plans rocking and do the business, let the ink dry. And when you actually have a real announcement, then you speak on it. And PPC is the best at that. Let me tell you, there's a lot of these other promoters like Eddie Hearn and they want to talk. They want to talk about. I mean, I'm hearing reports like Jerron Ennis may fight Virgil Ortiz. I mean, says who just make the fight. That's a good fight. Make the fight. But for me, I, I, I highly doubt that it happens when they're saying it would happen in February. So I'll keep you guys posted with Tank. Don't believe the lies. Wait till you hear from accredited sources or Tank himself. Yeah. Breaking news. After I recorded the audio that you guys heard at the beginning, Gervonta Davis looked online. He's seen all of the rumors and the reports that he could be somehow combined on the David Benavidez fight card, pushing it back to possibly January to which Tank Davis, he's seen this and on social media on Twitter, he responded cap CAP. And as we know, cap means to lie or a lie. 
right? So according to Tank, he's heard the rumors and he's heard, you know, different people coming out and saying this is the truth. He's saying that's not the truth. So ironically enough, before this updated tweet came out, luckily I was able to catch it before I published. But I said in the audio that I recorded before he even put this out, I stated that we need to wait until Javante Davis says something. There's a lot of low quality information being put out, shock value stuff, people trying to be shock jocks, Howard Stern, whatever. And it's not really the truth. So I said, we need to wait till PBC makes it official or particularly hear from the horse's mouth, Javante Davis. And like I said, ironically enough, the reports that are now out, he's def he's debunking and refuting them and saying it's cap. So me, I never claimed to know what is happening. I told you it is best to sit back and enjoy the show, wait for more developments from the fighter himself. Tank is at that level face of boxing. So he'll he'll let people know what's going on. Other than that, it's just a bunch of speculation. Some people are like the venue, this, that. Oh, it's going to be on David Benavidez's card. At this point, I think this proves my earlier point that it's better to just wait, see what they have in store and then keep it pushing. For more accurate, high quality boxing news, subscribe.